All right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. We are truly excited to have you here with us today. Um, hey, if you're a new member here with us today, we just ask that you could just stay on to uh, the end of the sermon. Pastor Scott, I'd uh, love to be able to meet you myself and also our director of operation i'm sorry director of hospitality tanya uh just to get to know you a little bit better and uh, gather some little brief information it won't last longer than two minutes also if you don't know we do have a website that is www.intlword.net please do go onto our website and subscribe for newsletters we have a newsletter that comes out every single uh the first of the month every single month and they are phenomenal a lot of great news updates and more also, be sure to, while you're on our website, click our new members lounge. I'm sorry, our uh, members lounge, where we have our new members link. You can click on that. We fill out some information for, um, get some information for you, just to kind of get to know you a little bit better, see what it is that you do, what you're coming looking for. Um, also, be sure to submit our your prayer requests. We'd love to be able to pray for you. Uh, there is power in prayer. And all you have to do is go to our contact us page, uh, click the link. You can just fill out the form. Form and let us pray for you. We'd love to be able to hear a praise report, like some of the praise reports that you'll hear today. Also, be sure if you want to stay engaged, some of you all into Facebook, some of you all may not be into, but we'll love to be able to interact with you even on Facebook. Um, hey, we actually reached uh, 286 people uh, just this week in the past seven days. So it's growing by leaps and bounds. God is doing amazing things. And I guess we could throw that in the praise of course too <laughs> um but at the same time um even if you want to get more engaged and keep your heart and mind on god's word we have our group administrator which is minister dion posted some amazing excellent questions to keep our minds just stayed on god throughout the week and so uh, uh we love we love the program and what god's doing and the great uh great heights that he's taken us to pastor scott has prepared an amazing word for us today and it's entitled vengeance from victim to victor. We're really excited about that. But before we get into that, we're going to open up with a word of prayer by Minister Dion. Then we're going to have the praise reports uh, read by uh, Sister Tanya. And then we're going to have the intro into today's lesson read by Sister Shalita. Thank you all so much for joining us and turn it over to you, Minister Dion. All right, everybody, please bow your heads with me. Um, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for another day, Lord Father. Thank you for um, yet yeah, another Bible study. Um, I'm praying that we could just grow by leaps and bounds spiritually today and that you just touch our hearts and uh, meet us all exactly where, we, where we're at because we know that this word is, uh, you know, particularly for us and especially for us, Lord. And uh, Father, I'm praying that uh, you just meet our every need, meet the needs of others that even just watch this recording, Lord. Um, I'm praying that you just work some miracles this week. And I'm just praying that uh, you just have us to trust in you and have that true um, unwavering faith in you, Lord. Um, but Father, I'm praying that you just use Pastor Scott he's a, as he's a willing vessel, Lord. And um, I just thank you for using each and every one of us, um, you know, to be a part of this spiritual family. And I just pray that it just continues to grow and that we can all just go, grow closer to each other while growing closer to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, so this is exciting. It's my first time doing praise reports, so I'm super excited about when I found out I got to, to do it. I was like, oh, this is super exciting. So um, we have a, a, quite a few, actually. I'll start off with um, Bible Facebook is growing. <laughs> well, that's super exciting. Uh, we also have um, in our household um, uh, financial blessings. Uh, we have Sister uh, Shade and Brother Dion. Uh, it's all sides, all sides. I mean, it's their jobs. They are being blessed in their jobs and in their finances. Um, they are just growing <laughs> so much in the word. Um, and Brother Dion um, was just blessed with the opportunity to get a new car. We already know they get blessed with cars, so that's pretty amazing. <laughs> Um, we also have sister Jessica, um, the Lord has restored a failing relationship in her family of over 10 years. This relationship had been failing and it has now been restored. So that is amazing. Amazing. Um, emotionally amazing. 
Uh, so we thank God for that. Also, Brother Fernando has been receiving favor at work uh, with bosses and employees. So that's also, we thank God for that because that's a, that's a huge, huge deal. So, okay, that's all I have. And I will hand it right over to Sister Shalita. Wow, some amazing phrase reports. That's just awesome. I'm excited to hear about them as well. And as we're growing, it's wonderful. So we're going to get into it. Um, and for the title for today's lesson is Vengeance from Victim to Victor. Ever experience a time when someone deliberately took advantage of you in so much that it provoked you to anger, hoping that something bad would happen to them? To make things worse, the very system that was set up to protect us is allowing these evil doers to get away without serving the time or penalty. In today's lesson, we will learn how to turn things over to God, switching positions from being the victim to the victor in this message entitled Vengeance. All right, and we turn it back to you, Pastor Scott. Wow, wow. You did such a wonderful job. All of you do such a wonderful. I like, I'm sitting here like, man, I should get me some lines together that I remember so I can kind of catch up with you all. Uh, excellent job for everyone. Have a little treat before I go into the word of God. Uh, I have asked um, none other than Elder Angel Barrett to give us a five minute recap of last week. So it keeps us and it'll segue right into the lesson for this week. And I'll just say this about Elder Angel Barrett. You know, you all see her as the lady with that smile and that personality and good-looking husband who just had his birthday. You know, yeah, that's how y'all just see her. But I've known her for 30 years to the year, 30 years. And I will say this um, about Elder Angel Barrett. Even at that time when she first, actually we met in Germany, and she first came uh to work along with me, or I say I was her pastor, uh, she has always been one of my number one students, always. She's one of those ones. She, she, don't look, she don't just look smart. She really is. And I see she got her glasses on today. So you know, you know this is going to be a real review. So without any further uh, ado, uh, I'll turn this over to Elder Angel Barrett. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, saints. I'm so glad to be with you all again today. Give honor to God and to Pastor Scott and to all the children of the Most High God. Uh, the lesson on last week was stupendous, as always. And uh, the title was Follow the Breadcrumbs. Follow the Breadcrumbs is a uh, idiom or a uh, phrase that is used to say, follow the details that is leading you up to where you need to be. And in pertaining to the lesson, it is all the things that the Lord has allowed in our lives, the events, the situations, uh, the good and the bad, uh, people who have come into our lives or have left our lives. All of this is breadcrumbs leading us up to the bread of life, which is Jesus Christ. And uh, he is the bread from heaven. John 6 tells us that he is the living word. If we eat of him, we will not hunger again. And uh, last week, we learned about a man who ate of the breadcrumbs that led to Jesus, and his name was Bartimaeus. In Mark chapter 10, we learned that uh, he was sitting outside of Jericho while Jesus was on his way somewhere else. He called out because he heard about Jesus. He had heard, he had gotten a breadcrumb, if you will. He had heard about the miracles. He had heard that it might be my turn next time. If I ever get to be uh, anywhere near him, I'm going to call out to him. And that's what he did. And so um, Jesus heard him call, but the people around him was telling him to be quiet. But the more they told him to be quiet, the louder he got. It says that he called out even the more in Mark 10. It says that. And um, Jesus stopped and stood still. Last week, that was the first time I ever paid attention to that phrase. I've read that story many times since I was a child, but hadn't paid attention to that phrase that Jesus stopped. He stood still and paid attention to that cry. Pastor Scott was letting us know that when we have a cry out to God that is sincerely from our heart, and if that cry that we are making, if that petition is going to uh, benefit the kingdom of God, then Jesus is listening. He cares about your 
situations and circumstances. Whatever it is we're going through, it doesn't matter what it is. Bartimaeus had a physical malady. We may have physical challenges ourselves. We can cry out to him and say, have mercy upon me, just like Bartimaeus did. You know, and in, in, uh, in his time, he, was, he wasn't somebody popular. He wasn't a celebrity. He wasn't somebody that they would like, share, and follow, if you know what I'm saying. He was just a nobody, as people would say. And as a matter of fact, the Bible uh, uh, says that he was called blind Bartimaeus. That's how they knew him. Nowadays, we would shorten and say blind Bart. Yo, that's just blind Bart. But even though they considered him to be insignificant, and that word insignificant, I looked it up because I was like, I really want to know what that means. And it means that you're meaningless. It means worthless. It means not even worth considering. So when he cried out, they were like, shh, the master is on his way to do something important. You know, well, Bartimaeus was important and you are too. So even if your uh, physical challenge or financial challenges or relationship issues cause you to feel some kind of deficiency, um, Pastor Scott encouraged us, and this really spoke to me last week. He he said, don't let the inability make you feel insignificant, and that inability that makes you feel insignificant, whatever it is. Um, some people consider their marital status to be an inability. Um, your job or where you live at or the kind of clothes you were able to purchase, the kind of car you drive, all of that. Don't let that label you. Don't let that label you. So I'm speaking to all of us, including myself. We can't let that happen anymore. We can't let um, those things define who we are. Blind Bartimaeus could have just sat back and said, well, I'm blind. Who's going to pay attention to me? But no, he used all of his other abilities to reach Jesus. And that's what we have to do. Whatever we do have, use that for God's glory. If you're physically challenged, what I have learned in my walk and my journey with physical challenges has been a benefit and I can pass that on to others. If you can't get out every single day, well, use your phone then. Can you text? Can you email? Can you call somebody? Can, can you make a difference through a postcard? Can you make a difference through a, a, a GIF on Facebook? Whatever you can do, let's do that. Because Blind Bartimaeus Bass opened up his mouth he uh, amplified his voice so loud, Jesus stood still to hear his cry. And Jesus is saying to us also, don't let the circumstance label you. Don't let that become the biggest part of you anymore. Instead, cling to Jesus like Bartimaeus did. And we find out that uh, his inability meant nothing to Jesus. God knows exactly where we are. He knows exactly what we need. And if you are a child of God, you are somebody, you are not insignificant, you are not meaningless. As a matter of fact, you have much meaning and purpose in your life and Jesus is the one that gave it to you. And if you're a child of God, you are somebody and you have every reason to hold your head up high. Amen. Praise the Lord. Be blessed. Amen. Amen. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Woo, 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 woo. Amen. You know, um, I did not realize until now that um, God is using that lesson from Bartimaeus to segue right into where we are today. Um, if you notice, as uh, Elder Baird, who did a fabulous job, just an outstanding job. My God, I was enjoying hearing her, and she was just saying what she got from what I said. I'm like, did I say that? <laughs> Good, great. <laughs> Listen. Um, Bartimaeus was persistent. And I want you to know, um, today, you're going to be hearing about persistency even more. Even though the title of what I'll be talking about is called Vengeance. But you're going to hear this story about a person that was so persistent, and they had to get their need to God. And I want to say this to you all. God is not a man that he should lie. And the Bible says he actually attends, he is attentive to our cry, as Elder Barrett just brought out. God never, there is never any time that you ask God for anything that he doesn't hear it. Mm -hmm. You come from your heart. There is never a time. But there are those times where seemingly 
God's not on our time spectrum. In other words, he is not moving when we want him to move. And listen, I'm going to say this to you, and I'm going to go right into our lesson even that much more. If you're going to be a good parent, there are certain things that you'll have the ability to do for your children, but if you do that, it's going to hinder them. Mm. If every time you try to um, reward your child and they're not doing what you ask them to do, you teach them how to become lazy. You teach them how to become passive. And God doesn't want us to be either one of the two. He wants us to always be um, alert to him and mindful of him and what he's trying to do for our life. Always. So we're going to get ready to go into this uh, actual lesson. I'll say, uh, Barrett, your uh, microphone still on. It's all good. There you go. So uh, you'll find me coming today from the book of St. Luke, the, the 18th chapter. It's a it's a story. It, when I say a familiar story, it's one that I would say it's kind of like a 50-50. Some may have heard it. Some may not have heard it. But God uh, conveys these messages how he wants it to, you know, how he wants it to affect us. So even though it may seem like a familiar story, God will give us exactly what he wants for us to receive and utilize it. God has this way of saying the exact same thing and he will translate it or interpret it to differently to each and every one of us, even though we're hearing the same message. And that's because God's word is so, um, so uh it works, his word works with pinpoint accuracy to the hearers. And if you're hearing the word of God by faith, it's going to be a blessing to where you are. So in the 18th chapter of St. Luke, I'm going to begin reading at verse number one and uh, go into this uh, lesson entitled Vengeance. And uh, we'll just see what God uh, takes us on this. So I'm starting at verse number one, 18th chapter. And he spake a parable unto them, to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, there was a city, excuse me, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded men. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward, he said within himself, though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continued coming she weary me. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge saith, and shall not God avenge his own elect? which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them. Verse 8, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. My God. So I just heard me read from Luke 18, chapter verses 1 through 8. Here's this scenario. Jesus has been traveling with his disciples almost three years now. And he's been trying to prepare them for ministry and try to prepare them for things that may come their way. Because you should know at this time, there were many that were trying to destroy or kill Jesus and his disciples. They were under the Roman rule. And as far as the Romans were concerned, the Romans wanted to be able to destroy Jesus because his doctrine caused people to follow him, and that took away them from following the Caesar at that time. So there were issues that they had. Not only that, but there was the scribes, the Pharisees, and the Sadducees that were the religious Jews that did not like Jesus. They did not like Jesus because what he was doing, he was causing his words that he was sharing with the disciples to show how wrong they were. Side note, P. 
people who are doing wrong don't like to hang around the word of God because we do know Jesus is the word of God because the word of God is light. And when I say light, it's understanding and it reveals. Light always reveals darkness. And if you're walking in darkness, in other words, if you're walking without following the word of God, then the word of God is going to follow you and is going to expose you right where you are. So Jesus is talking this day. He's talking to his disciples because he wants them to know. And this is why that verse number one started out how men ought always to pray. Men being mankind, people need always to pray and faint not. Now, I find this really uh, peculiar that he's talking to these men. He's about to teach them how to pray. And then Jesus, seemingly, he uses an extremity about a widow woman. You know, you think about it. If you were going to teach people how to do something, if it was a group of, of men, you would think, well, I'm going to use the example of other men. But there's a reason that Jesus uses this woman. And not only that, but he identifies her as a widow woman. Watch this. There's another character in the story. It's a judge. And then Jesus brought out some things about this judge that we need to really take and home in on and take a good look at. This judge was not a judge that feared even God. That's what the Bible said. He said not only did this judge not fear God, but he had no regard for men. He didn't fear no man. And yet we find out the actual story changed and hones in now on this woman and her relationship with this judge because the Bible says she comes into this judge and she says to this judge, I need you to avenge me of my adversary. Let's just talk about this word avenge or Let's talk about the word vengeance. Uh, Minister Emmanuel, when you hear the word vengeance, what does that mean to you? When I hear the word vengeance, um, payback, the big payback. Get them back. They hurt me, I'm going to hurt them back. Very good. Very good. Sister Shalita, when you hear this word vengeance, because this woman wanted God, she wanted the, 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 the um, judge to take out vengeance. What does that mean to you? And the same thing like what you was, Emmanuel was saying is about payback, getting them back for what they've done to me, what evil they've done to me. So, Well, yeah. while you got your microphone on, let me just ask a little. We just got to talk a little bit. Have you ever wanted vengeance on people? And how did it make you feel when you wanted vengeance on them? Yes, I have wanted vengeance on people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, how do you, you, what do you mean? How do I feel about getting How, how did you feel? Them? How did you feel? Whatever that is that they did to you to want that vengeance, how did it make you feel whatever they did to you to want vengeance? How does that feel? Yeah, you're angry. You want you want that reciprocated back to them what they did to you. You want to see them you want to see them burn. I mean, you <laughs> you want to see all the bad things happen all at once. And yeah. uh even though you're saved and sanctified or whatever, it, you want you want them to feel the pain. Yeah. You know, hey, vengeance is real. And this is not, but my question is not since you've been saved. My question is just that let's just deal with vengeance. Let me talk to somebody who I know they probably never thought of this. Oh, uh, Sister Tanya, uh, have you ever felt like someone did you so bad and you want to get them back? I mean, I, you have to think way, way back. But how did that make you feel? How does vengeance feel? It feels terrible because you just, you can't wrap your mind around anything else. That's all you think about is, I want to see this happen to that person. I want to see this happen to that person. I hope they trip and fall. I hope they get hit by a car. I hope they, you know, their plane crashes, you know. <laughs> oh, they, wow. Wow. They love and suffer. I don't know. You just, you have these horrible, horrible thoughts of what you want to happen and you just get consumed with it and get 
like uh, Sister Shalita said, like you get angry and you just keep getting angrier. Yeah, but man, thank you for being so real. I like that. See, that's one thing I like about you will be real. See, sometimes what we do is we paint this picture according to who our audience is. So me, <laughs> yeah. I, I I have people that got me mad, you know. <laughs> I I kind of have to remember what they did. It's so low. Uh, it was yesterday at 3:45. We know exactly what it was because we were going by Miss Jenkins' house, and when we were past Miss Jenkins' house, we saw them. They stepped on Miss Jenkins' grass. I cut her grass. They stepped on it. I said, "Hey, did y'all know y'all stepped on it?" They're like, "This ain't your grass, no way." So what do it mean to you? What do it mean to me? And here's the other part. <laughs> we try to make our vengeance look like I just want them to feel what they did to me. No, we don't. I like how Tanya said, I want the plane to crash. Who put them in that plane? Said, yeah, crash the plane. I'll be like, like mm -hmm. or they trip on something. And, and this should be real. Some of us pushed them. Yeah, trip on nothing. You ain't got to trip on something. I'm going to trip you. Now, let me go on to the calm side of the world. <laughs> Minister Dion. Have you ever felt that vengeance? Somebody did you so wrong and, and you wanted to get them back? How did that make you feel when they did you wrong and it's just vengeance? How does vengeance feel? Um, yes, sir, I have. And at the time, I just wanted to get payback, whether it was me having to do it or something else. Uh -huh. you know? Amen. See, Dion doing like the Godfather. I want to get payback, you know. I don't know if it was me or Don Corleone or it's going to be Vito, but somebody get them back, you know? Hey, that's 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 nice, but hey, let's just get real. Now, Sister Shade, you might as well go ahead and just tell the story and everything like that, because I know Sister Shade is a very calm, collective young lady. She's very poised, but don't you step on her foot. Don't you step on her foot, Yarm. Sister Shade, how does that vengeance thing feel? How does that? It's like a burning anger. Um, you just, just like a what? Like a burning anger. Hmm. Okay. Um, you just, you start to get more upset because even if you could do something about it or if you want to do something about it, mm -hmm. it's almost like nothing will fix what they did to you. Mm -hmm. And wow. so you, you, I guess it's just kind of like an annoying itch. Like you just want to do something so badly, you want to hurt them back how they hurt you. Yeah. But in the in the end, is it really gonna make you feel good? Probably not. <laughs> mm, wow, that's that's honest. I, I like how you said uh, it's like a burning itch. Good God, Ugh, a burning. It's like you itching. Have you ever had one of those little bruises and you're like, let me scratch that and ew, it hit the even. It hurts to even. Ouch! Ow, ow, ow. It hurts to even scratch it. Vengeance is like it's just it's just something that just it just frustrates you. Now I'm going to ask the most common person I know, none other than Elder Brian Barrett. Calm, cool, collective. I mean, if you ever seen him mad, you might as well just say, "Boy, the devil has taken him over." So hey. Elder Brian Barrett, Cool Calm Collective, my dear friend, how can you imagine what it's like to feel like getting people back in vengeance? How does that make you feel? Oh, uh, it makes you feel good. I mean, after all, in the Bible, it says an eye for an eye. <laughs> well, I'm talking about how does it make you feel being, being angered at what people did to you? <laughs> um, so since my years of working with the public I come across this several times mm -hmm. and uh, it, it doesn't feel good and sometimes you can lose sleep at night uh, it's a lot of things that go through your mind and, right. um, and if I didn't have the Lord it would be different so yes sir yes sir and thank you so much for sharing that you know Most people's lack of rest is because of they're going in their mind through things that have happened to them 
throughout the day and it's left them not able to just concentrate. It's left them thinking on how people have done us or things. And notice this, the people that affect you the most are generally the ones that are closest to you. The ones who should know you better. Jesus uses this woman, and I want y'all to really listen to this. Jesus uses this woman to show about, remember now, the main topic we're talking about is actually prayer. Because the disciples are going through right now, and they're keenly aware that no matter where they go with Jesus, their life is in danger. Sometimes, have you noticed there are certain people that you associate with, and because of your association, automatically, people put you in the category as being just like them, and especially if they hate you. If people don't like you and you're around a certain person, generally that certain person isn't going to be liked by them either because they think the both of you or all of you are in the word is called cahoots. Jesus uses this example of this woman to make sure you understood here is the extremity. She's not just a woman. Now, ladies, you all know there is a thing called discrimination, and especially with women. Sister Tanya, give me one area where women get discriminated in. Just one area, women. Jobs. Jobs, absolutely. It'll be harder for women to get certain jobs. Men can get it going there blindfolded. They're going there, hey, I just want this job. Do you know anything about it? No, I'll learn, Charlie. Okay, Bill, fine, you got the job. You let Sarah want that job. Do you have a resume? Oh, yes, I do. Uh, mm, okay, you got a recommendation? Oh, yeah, here's my recommendation right here from my last job. How long did you work that job? Was it over three years? Oh, yeah, it was seven years. Uh, well, um, do you know, uh, did you, how, how can you qualify? Did you take the test? For the, there is discrimination. And there are certain things that's harder for a woman. And here's the thing. During this time in the Bible, men ruled everything. They did. Notice this. You don't even hear the name of this woman. Because in that day, the women had no voice. Sister Shalita, how does it feel to be a woman and have no voice or say so in your own environment, your own workplace, wherever you are? How does that feel not to have a voice? And have you had a time when you had no voice, how does that feel? Uh, it's very frustrating, uh, especially when you know you're qualified and capable of doing what most of the male counterparts are doing. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very frustrating and uh, it's, it can be very angry. You can get very angered with it. Um, and I felt the same way. You wanted to quit. You wanted to leave because mm -hmm. what's the point of having a voice when it's muffled? So, Woo! All right, Reverend. Y'all might want to write that down as a side note. What's the point of having a voice if it's muffled? Good point. Sister Shay, when you are, when your voice has been, it's like it's not heard, because I know you're a manager on your job. And a lot of times when your voice is not heard, how does that feel to not have a say in anything that goes on? And you're supposed to be in a position to be heard. Um, it's frustrating. It makes you feel like, then why was I even put here? Um, mm. Why am I doing this? Um, it also makes you feel like, it makes you question your abilities. Um, yeah. You think like, okay, if I, if I, if nobody's listening to me, am I wrong? Am I, should mm. I be changing how I'm thinking? Should I be reacting to things the way they are? Right. Um, it's just very frustrating. Very good. Very, it's frustrating. And then how do you then gain your voice? Elder Barrett, how can you gain your voice when the people all around you, they try, as uh, Sister Shalita mentioned, they're muting and they're muffling your voice so that you can't say anything, but you're supposed to just get along. You know what they say about the typical woman. She should be seen but not heard. How does that feel? It feels horrible. 
Yeah. I, I hate being treated unfair. Mm -hmm. I, I really hate it. I I hate um, when people uh, disregard me um, just because of my gender, uh, sometimes because of your color and also mm -hmm. because of your age. Yeah. Uh, it's very unfair and, and they don't look at you as a person, as a human being that has a heart that can be broken. Mm -hmm. All of you have said the, the, the beautiful. I couldn't have said it better. Because when you're being discriminated against and when you're being muffled or you're being muted, or you're being unheard and un, un, you just you don't you're not even like a person. Remember earlier you were talking about Bartimaeus because of his. His, his deficiency, his inability to see, he became like a second class citizen or third class citizen, not even a citizen. And the same thing that many people try to do with us and with you all as women. Jesus is using this woman because he's wanting the people to see that you cannot let what others think about you slow you down from getting to God. You cannot let what others think about you. If you don't get any validation for anyone, just know that God hears and sees and can understand what you're going through. Because the Bible said Jesus was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows and acquainted with griefs. And not only does he know what it feels like to be rejected, but the Bible even said, and we turned our heads away from him as the only begotten. We didn't want to respect him as the only begotten son of God because other people might say, well, that was how it was then in the Bible. Listen, if you have a need that you don't bring to God, you're disrespecting him. If I have a need and I don't bring it to God, it's disrespecting him. Listen with uh, mothers. Sister Tanya, when Shay was living with, with you, and she was just a little uh, a little girl, when she had a need for something that she, you know, she wanted around around the house, or when she had a need, if she wouldn't bring it to you, and she tried to go to other people and other neighbors and everything, how would that make you feel when she would go to other people for what you could provide for her? I would feel like, what the heck are you doing? <laughs> yeah, what what the heck are you doing? I like that because it. That's what see. She's just real. She's just real. So Jay, what the heck are you doing? Oh, mother, I'm just trying to. Uh, no, I am your mother. <laughs> yeah, let's just be real. When we are in position, and we've been assigned to take care of our children. We want to be those ones that take care of our children. We don't want our children picking up things from the neighbors because everything they pick up from outside ain't clean. It's like just Shalita always said when her and I talk, not all money is good money. Now, if people could really learn that, they would grow far and wide. So at this time, there's a big, a big move against women because there's a lot of discrimination being used and people don't go to women. But one thing that Jesus does when he's utilizing these women as examples, he wants the people to see is a woman will be more persistent than a man. Now, y'all should be saying amen. A amen. Let me tell you something. If I have two people, here's a man and a woman, and I have a prayer request. And these both have the same knowledge. I will probably go to the woman first before the man. Well, oh, since you like women more than men, that doesn't make sense. Why would you go to the man? He knows the same thing. Because see, men, we do know the same thing, but we don't we don't put a lot of passion into things. Come on, let's can we just be real? We don't put a lot. Of, hey, 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 George, would you please pray for me? Oh, what's the need? Well, I just need some issues worked out in my life. Oh, ain't no problem. All right, you ready? We'll pray. Oh, Lord, bless them in Jesus' name. Work it out. That was it? That, that was bless and work it out. Have you ever seen a mother <laughs> or a sister? She wants some prayer for something. And she needs something worked out. She's not coming there. I don't know any mother 
that when something's not going on and she really wants to get hold of God and she wants to pray, uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, because I know, I know you hear me. I know. And this thing, uh-uh, no, I'm not. we're going to talk about it right now. We're going to talk about it. And don't let us start walking the floor at the same time now. Because, see, Lord, I need you to work this out because the dog keep running away with the spoon. And then I need you to do this other situation, work this thing out here and work that. A woman will take the time and pray about everything. And she's not stopping until she get what she wants. Now, men, we try to pretend we can't relate to that. But let, let, let me kind of bring you in a little bit more. Have you ever had a, a wife or a woman or your relationship want to get a point over to you? <laughs> and she'll tell you about whatever it is and she'll say, hey, listen, I think you need to take the garbage out. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, yeah, we'll get around. Not, not the garbage stinks. Okay, I need to, it's the fourth quarter. The quarterback got the ball. It's for the, it's the whoever gets the next touchdown wins. And then, yeah, and it's stinking real bad. Like right now, stinking. But I said, babe, I'm, I'm going to get to it. And it stinks so bad, you need to move right now because it's going to stink and pollute the whole world in this world right now if you don't move. And that's what I'm suggesting that you, oh, sweet, I did, oh, hell, here, here come the pass. And all of a sudden, this is what happens to your television. Someone steps right in front of it. I said the garbage need to be taken and score. He missed the touchdown that would won the game. You stepped in front of he, you. You stepped in front of the television. If you'd have took the garbage out. I would have not, not stepped in front of it. You caused me to do that. So you should be mad at yourself, not mad at me. Because if you would have done what I asked you to do kindly, because I know I did it kindly. You, remember, you know what? Let's talk about this. Let's talk about it. I started out with you real kind. I was like, hey, could you please take the garbage down? And then you said, no, nah, oh, just give me a minute. You know, you're going to have to make the man sound real stupid. Oh, just give me a minute. You know, a no, it wasn't no minute. I waited there. It was 30 seconds. That's all you needed. You could have been out there, took the garbage, came back, but you want to sit there and complain about, it's a piece of, it's a piece of cowhide Throw it in the air. Why don't you take your hide and throw it in the air? Get that garbage out of here. It's sticking up the world. And the man, <laughs> he's so, he's so shocked. He's like, yes, dear. I'll go again. That's all I was trying to say. That's all I was trying to say from the start. If you just got up and did that, we didn't have to go, to you. yes, dear. I'm going to take out the garbage here. I'll take out next week garbage. I'm going to take out everything. I hate garbage. I hate everything about garbage. And the man goes and he gets up. Because see, a woman will be persistent. And God knows if you get a woman to be persistent in prayer about the enemy, she's going to get vengeance. Because the Bible says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. Sometimes God isn't going to be any more interested in it than you're interested in him. <laughs> God is no more interested in moving on your behalf if you're not interested in moving on his behalf. So here Jesus takes this extremity with this woman because he's wanting people to see that you should always pray and faint not. That woman would not have moved until that man took that garbage out. She'd have still been there till today. And guess what? If he'd have gone to bed and then take that garbage out still, she'd be right there in that bed. Mm -hmm. Pull the cover off him. Mm -hmm. Hey, why you pull the cover off? Because you ain't gone and got that garbage out yet. It mean that much? It, I, 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 hey, I love how you men are look. Y'all married men, I love how y'all look. Y'all look, I love, that's why I love men. Y'all like this. It's not talking about me. Honey, please, don't flinch. Don't flinch, honey. Don't let them know that it's me today. I'm going to get, look, look, I'm going to get the coverage out. Some of the survival study over, okay? Just, just let me just look calm. <laughs> Let's just be real. So Jesus is using this woman 
the show, she doesn't even have a husband. She's a widow. And if she would be persistent to want a vengeance on her adversary, you should know she's already gone to her adversary. She's tried to work that thing out. Because now she's trying to go above her adversary to get what she needs to be done. Too many times we're trying to work with the adversary and compromise with the adversary. And as the Bible says, our adversary is the devil. Don't ever settle for anything that God doesn't have for you. Frustrated, angered, uh, uh, just, just, just distressed, depressed, oppressed, all these type of things. God never wants his children to be that way. He wants his children to be able to know that, hey, God is on your side and the power of God is with you and you can have what the petition is that you want. All you've got to do is touch and agree and go to the Father and go to Jesus. And the Bible said when we come to him, we must know that he is God and that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. You cannot diligently be seeking anything just by, Lord, uh, bless, bless, bless my finances. Bless my job. Bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. Did God hear it? Yes. Is he moving on it? Because God wants people to be effectually and fervently involved in prayer. Let's just be real. Prayer is work. And a lot of people don't want to work. So a lot of people are just lazy. Hey, I'm not, I'm not exempt. There are times when I'm lazy in my prayer. There are times I'm lazy when I should be fasting. There are times I'm lazy to doing things. Let me share a real quick testimony real, real quick. Something that happened today. I'm driving. I'm going to church. I've got my church that I go to. I'm driving to church. And then I come by this one corner that inevitably I always got to stop for this light. It's a long light. And at the long light, there's usually someone there with a sign in their hand, homeless, can you help me with money? And the Lord told me about this last week because I was like, oh, I didn't have money. I, I, I didn't have, but what the whole thing really was is I didn't want to have while I'm driving and then stop and then trying to get me, trying to go in my pocket and try to find out this, uh, get this money. And then I found out I didn't have, you know, the money that I want to have to be able to give them. So the Lord told me from now on, prepare to be a giver. Prepare to be a blessing to those that don't have. See, a lot of times what we forget is when you do this to those that don't have, when you don't give, you don't, you don't love, you don't spend time, you don't share, it is doing it unto the Lord. The Bible said, Jesus, when did we do this unto you? He said, well, when I was a hunger, you fed me not. When I was a thirst, you gave me no drink. When I was in prison, you visited me not. They said, when did we do that? And the Lord said, when you've done it to any of these people, you've done it to me. Prepare yourself to be a blessing, and the blessing you need will come to you. So this week, I'll go over that same corner, and I'm driving, and I see this guy, and I'm like, ah, because it brought back to my memory. I'm supposed to be prepared so I can just have a little money. I can give some, you know, some money to people who just don't have. It is not our responsibility. Let me just say this side note number two. It is not our responsibility to follow people and find out what they're going to do with our money. If I was not giving it as unto the Lord, that would be different. But I'm giving it because the Lord has given me to give it. I don't have to figure out what they're doing with their money. I give it because the Lord has told me to give to those that are in need. So I give to those that are in need. He didn't say just give to the saved people that are in need. No, it's whoever is in need. If you have the ability to be a blessing, you'll be blessed by being a blessing. So I go today and I'm sitting there and I'm like, ah, I don't have the money I want. Nah. Okay, so I drive, I go to church. Soon as I got out of church, the Lord said, you know, um, that gentleman, that was about 35 minutes away from where you're located now. I kind of can feel what's getting ready to happen next. Yeah. 
So the store is right there. You can go to that store right there and get the money that you say you needed. And then you drive that you drive that time and go get that person that money that you was going to give. And that's what I did. Many times our blessings are held up because we're not going to be a blessing. Many times the very thing that we are wanting from God is the very thing that God wants us to be able to bless people with also. Everybody doesn't need finances. Some people need your time. Some people need your talent. Some people need your wisdom. And a lot of people need your testimony on what God has done for you. And when we don't give our testimony, when we don't share what people need to hear, and it makes God feel like, oh, you don't care? So what happens is I go there, I drive 35 minutes, and I give the person, the actual person wasn't there, the one that was there today, but there was another person there. And I gave them that money. And God was not so much as being person specific, but giving specific. Sometimes it's not who we give to, it's the heart we have when we give. So when I did that, this burden came off of me. Because as long as I had that burden that I forgot to do what the Lord told me to do, then I was like, I got to make it right. When things are not going right in your life and it become burdensome, there is something God wants us to do. And that is definitely to pray. So what happens here, the woman goes to, she goes over her adversaries. She really had no voice to be there in the justice system. And you should know there's a difference between rich people justice and poor people justice. Minister Emanuel, what do you think I mean there's a difference between rich people's justice and poor people's justice? <laughs> uh, rich people uh, justice is given certain privileges that, that are to the poor man because of their financial status. Absolutely. And because of their financial status, all of a sudden, they could be doing dead wrong. Everybody knows they're wrong. It's on all the newspapers. And, I mean, all the news channels, in the newspaper, magazines, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, all day long, we all see the wrong that they're doing, but because they're rich, they are not going to jail. Now, now, Tommy, Tommy and Tulum, Tommy went across the same street. Tommy jaywalked. Tommy got mad. He kicked the light pole. He threw the light pole down. He then got the light that was in it and took the actual green light and put it where the red light is to say, see, I'm telling you all, I didn't run a red light. It was green. See, see, see. But Toby, Toby said, uh, officer, I didn't run no red light. They put out the guns on Toby. Not only did they put out the gun, they grabbed Toby by his neck, said, don't move. Now raise your hands up. All right, I got that. Now let me see all five fingers on both hands. Don't reach for a gun. I let it. While Tommy is still out there arguing with the police, have knocked down the pole, and they said, well, we can put another pole up. We'll put another light up and everything. There. But you, you went and jaywalked, and you know you did. It, there is rich people justice, and there's poor people justice. This woman now has no husband, and during those times, the husband had to be the person that fend for the food. It was not normal. You don't believe me? Ask Naomi. Ask people who had to work in the fields. And when it came to the women, they didn't get equal pay. They didn't get, and they were not looked at as being. That's why a lot of the stories that you read about, they're read about people and women that we don't even know. And the woman at the issue, I mean, who had the issue of blood, what's her name? We don't know. And the woman at the well, and she did this, what's her name? We don't know. Because it wasn't significant then. Well, I want you to know right now that prayer is significant, and we need the women praying just like we need the men praying, and everybody be on the same accord and realize in God we all are significant. 
and we have to be persistent. Just like that woman who want that garbage taken out, when God, we're praying to God, be like that woman. Did she, she want her garbage taken out? She said, hey, listen, I need you to take this garbage out. God, I need you to hear my prayer. And if it didn't work out that day, you come right back the next day. Matter of fact, you, you ain't even going to wait till the next day. I'm going to start praying. I'm praying in the bed. Lord, please, I just need you to work this out. I need you to help my situation, help my baby, help my finances, help my this, help my whatever it is. Help, help, help. And the Bible says, Jesus said, hear what the judge is saying. What Jesus is doing, he's giving us an inside scoop on something that's happening spiritual that most people overlook. He says, the judge said within himself, I don't fear anybody, anyone. I don't fear man. I don't fear God. But what I don't want is this woman to keep on coming after me every day. Every single day, he had to see this woman. And you can imagine what it's like. You know, he probably gets into the job. All right. Um, let's see. Let me open up this curtain. He opened up the curtain. Here's that woman. Avenge me. Good golly. Let me go. Let me go get something down here at the break room and get something from the break room. He gets in the break room. He opened up the break room door. Avenge me. What in the world? Hey, do I got an email that came in? Yeah, here's one here. Who's this from? Avenge me. Everywhere I want to see, everywhere he's going, he's hearing this woman, and God is saying, I don't mind people doing that to me. It's not that I can't hear you. I heard you the first time, but I just want you to be persistent. Whatever you're going to be a part of, be all the way in it. Don't be a halfway person, a person who's always looking for a way to escape, a way out of this, a way out of that. No, be that type of person that when you're in it, have you ever had those people that you wish that, you know, like you, uh, when you were younger, you played like, the sports and there were certain people you're like, I want them on my side because if they're on my team, we're going to win. I want winners. God wants winners, and we're all winners if we make his life applicable to ours. If we make Jesus the focal point, if we're seeking first his kingdom and his righteousness, I want you to know there is no good thing that he will withhold from them that walk upright. If it's good for you, God's going to send it. God's going to give it to you. He wants, the Bible says he delights in mercy. But for those that are doing things that are upright, he will, he will go out of his way to make sure that they get blessed. And just like this judge who was an evil judge who didn't want to have to deal with all these type of things, he ain't fear nobody. But one thing he could not take is the constant persistency of that woman. He said, I've got to answer this. I've got to do this. And so I see now why Jesus uses this widow woman as an example, because we can learn a lot from the women. And women, I will say this to you all. If you are a prayer person, keep on praying. Keep on believing. Don't give up. Don't give in. What happens with too many times with people is they give in right there. God's getting ready to move. God's getting ready to work this thing out. And you know what? That's when they say, you know what? I'm just going to throw in the towel. He hasn't moved by now, so he may not move then. I'm just going to throw in. Don't throw in the towel. Because it's not over until God says it's over. And at the end, we're still going to win. You don't have to take vengeance out on others. Because God said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will replay, I will repay. If you take vengeance out on others, it binds God's hands. It ties them behind his back where he can't do that. Because if he does that, it will be attached to your fleshly vengeance of what people did to you. If you have no regret of Jesus going to the cross for you when he did no sin, then you should have no regret for what others are doing to you. And especially since Jesus has forgiven them of their sins, you need to always walk in forgiveness. And I need to always walk in forgiveness also. And you'll find out if we do that, it will remind God of Jesus and what he did. And then he will bless you just like that.
He'll bless you. So that's as far as I'm going to go today because that's what that actual judge did. He avenged her. And God wants us to know he will answer our prayers. There is one scripture that God said only about prayer that he does. He says prayer changes things. And it does. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. And it does. So without any further ado, I want to encourage you all. Hey, let's keep on praying. Let's keep on trusting God. Let's keep on being persistent in our relationship and what we need from God. And if we'll do that, we'll find out the Lord will be right there with us and he'll move on our behalf even when we didn't realize he would do that. So without any further ado, when I have Minister Emmanuel, why don't you go ahead and uh, end us with prayer today. Before you uh, pray, I just want to take the time. Again, Brother Robert, I appreciate you. Sister Laura Lai, I appreciate love you. Sister Talisha, uh, just everybody. Sister Beverly, thank God for you. Uh, Minister Beverly coming on and being a part of the group today. Listen, all of you have, place in, have a place in God. And if we don't learn what our potential is and fulfill that here, we will be living a unfulfilled life and God wants the best for us all. Sister Kate, so good to see you, my dear friend. I didn't, I didn't call on you today because I see you driving and I didn't want you to be over there getting mad at going off that road, being like that lady who didn't get that garbage taken out. So, hey, so without any further ado, Mr. Emmanuel, please uh, end us in prayer. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> all hands bowed. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace in the name of Jesus. Just ask it for forgiveness of all of our sins, whether they be known or unknown. I ask that you please forgive us. Lord, I ask that you give us the courage and tenacity to uh, continue to pray without ceasing and come to you first, Lord. Help us not to be uplifted in pride and trying to take care of and resolve issues of our own, but I ask that you help us to remain persistent in your word and our diligence to be able to come before your throne of grace in the name of Jesus, just asking for help, Lord. Uh, when we are weak, you are made strong according to your word, Lord, and I ask that you give us your strength, Lord, and empower us with the abilities uh, to be able to do your will be done. And vengeance is yours. That is your word. Lord, help us to stand on your word with everything that we have. And we thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all again. Hey, next week, invite some people out. You know, bring somebody. Be a blessing to somebody. And we'll see you next uh, Sunday. Take care. God bless. We'll see you soon now. Bye-bye.